This was the second round of the European Supermono Championship at Assen. It was our first time at the renovated circuit, as some of the old part of the circuit had been uh, sold off and a new one had been built. We were sharing the awning this time with the Smith sisters. Happy bunch of lads. That's a good picture. As with normal most of the meetings that we go to this year, the first thing we do is get the bike set up ready for the noise meter, which happens when the bikes are scrutinized at the first part of the day. Phil took the bike down with Chris uh, along for moral support. Out onto the track for the first qualifying session. You can clearly see here the new section of circuit. Looks like we're somewhere in Spain because it's all, I think the grass hasn't grown yet, so it all looks parched. It was quite windy actually, and there was a fair bit of uh, debris being blown onto the track, which is causing a few problems. The first section of the, the circuit, the right, followed by a long horseshoe shaped right, and then a left hand hairpin onto what is the back straight, it lends itself perfect for the mini mono. It was actually, I was making up quite a bit of time on this section of the circuit. Straight away into the uh, the first half dozen laps of the session, I thought it was quite important to get some time down, you know, get down to a reasonable time and set a what I call a banker to make sure that if anything does go wrong in later sessions, I've at least got a qualifying, decent qualifying session. I'm very so glad I did because I did feel that the bike wasn't performing at its best. It had an intermittent misfire which has been plagued us for quite some time, and I thought it was an ideal opportunity to come in and uh, do some setup to help get the bike sorted out. Discussing the idea with Phil and Chris here, trying to figure out which is going to be the best and most suitable modification for us to try first off. Phil, who's quite a whiz with the setup of the carburation, decided to have a go at leaning the mixture off, which, uh, which involves dropping of the needle, lowering the needle into the carburetor. Quite a fiddly job to do in the pit lane. But we had a reasonable amount of time to, to do it, so Phil decided to lean it off first of all and give it a try. Rolling the bike up to the engine starter here. the bike fired up on the rollers I knew it wasn't right. Something was definitely not, uh, well, the throttle wasn't responding very well and that for all the way like it had a frog in its throat. <laughs> Off 
with the tank again. This time we were going the opposite way with the needle in desperation to try and make the bike sort itself out. I was getting slightly frustrated at this point, missing so much of the session with various people coming in and out. Once again getting back out, right towards the end, I think we had about another five minutes left, so it's enough time to get a couple of decent laps in. Back at the awning, chance to sort of the first chance really to discuss a brief debrief on what initial problems were with the bike. I'll leave it up to Chris and Phil to get the bike sorted out onto the bench while I can get into and out of the gear. Smith sisters preparing the evening meal. Main event for them really. An old friend who used to one of the head uh, scrutineers and clerk of the course. Smashing chap. Always after any modification or even just stripping and cleaning of the bike, one of the first things I always try and do is to get the motor running, just to make sure that it does in fact run. Nothing more embarrassing than getting it all prepared and then just before the start of the qualifying session or the race, the bloody thing won't start. So quite important to make sure it runs. still a little concerned on the carburation of the bike. We modified the carburetor slightly to try and get around the issue. So once the bike was warmed up, they will ran the engine through uh, to a low throttle position but high RPM just to see how the throttle felt. He seemed to be happy enough.
just getting myself together. Quiet moment for myself, really, just before the start of the race. Phil's son Anthony had come along to the meeting to help out. And often he gets a chance to come along and it's nice to see him again. Just as I was about to go out, I noticed that, I don't know how it happened, but somebody had knocked the uh, front brake lever and it wasn't quite uh, in the right position, so everything has to be just so, I'm afraid. I managed to get uh, Chris to adjust it for me. down out of the pit lane onto the sighting lap. Well, it was quite a tense part of the race, even though the race hasn't actually started, it's a tense part of what I call the race, this getting your head into gear, making sure things are running fine on, on the run round to the start finish area. Flag off, red lights on, red lights out, and off we go to the first corner. I determined in this race to try and break the tail early, early, early in the race, get into the front and try and control it from the front by breaking away. And it seemed to work. with Lex van Dijk, Dutch rider, he was second with Mark Laws third. Up onto the rush front, up onto the top step. Any of the three steps is good but the top one is particularly good. Terwijl de bloemen in het leven van Oudland verkussen natuurlijk. Het is een kant klaar. Het is een kant klaar. Natuurlijk, een breed lachende en een breed lachen rond Weber natuurlijk erbij. Dat betekent dat we als zeeswerkingen hebben plaatsgevonden en iedereen de bloemen. Dat het aantekenen heeft van deze Ducati Club 
deze gaan we luisteren naar het Engelse volkslied. Ik ga het zo dat het een zoek was en de winnaar van de 